Ali, great to have you here. Welcome. Thank you so much. Excited to be here. Do you want to share any thoughts on the tech landscape right now and the market sell-off that we're seeing, the bad reaction to earnings? What's running through your brain? Yeah, I mean, I think what's happening, I mean, it's two things, right? On the one hand, it's the macro economy, which, you know, has been going, you know, it's it's been sort of turbulent over a long period of time, and it seems to be now come to an end where, you know, we see it on the job market and people are seeing it on inflation and, you know, the 10-year coming down and so on. And on the other hand, we have AI. So people are very excited. They know that it's going to absolutely change the whole world. And then huge investments have been done by the hyperscalers in AI. But for us as a company, we've been investing in data and AI for 10 years. And, you know, we see steady growth of revenue and customers getting value out of it. But there's been huge deployment of capital. So people are saying, is the ROI going to be there right away or not? Uh, so that's the big question. But I think AI is going to be amazing. It's going to continue providing value. The question is, you know, does it justify the massive investments that we saw just in the last year? Uh, and what's going to happen, especially if demand comes down now with what's happening in macro? Yeah. So, and again, to clarify for my benefit, if for any of the audience who are confused, are you a competitor to the big clouds like an Amazon and a Google and that kind of thing? Or do you run on their infrastructure? Yeah, great question. So we run on top of their infrastructure. So we don't have to deploy massive amounts of capital uh, to build data centers, cooling, and so on. We leverage what they already have. So we're much closer to the customers and their use cases with AI so that they can, the enterprises can actually get value out of that AI using us. Would so thousands and thousands of customers, yeah, using us to just, you know, for AI use cases. So then would you be on par with the likes of, okay, a, a Salesforce? I mean, that's more of a, a, a sort of customer acquisition model. It feels to me like you guys are trying to help companies use and optimize and understand and interact with their data and use AI to do so. Yeah, like, for instance, let me give you some examples. Rivian, for instance, uses us, right, in their cars to be able to automatically use AI on the data to optimize the battery consumption of the Rivian car or to switch lanes. Or JetBlue uses us to make sure that, you know, they can communicate using generative AI with their customers. Or Block, Square, when you go into that app, you can now speak to it instead of having to type, you know, on a screen. So these are use cases for enterprises so that they can deliver data and gen AI to their customers. So we directly see when Gen AI is being successful and value it's accruing to our customers. But we, we do that on software margins. We don't have to deploy billions and billions and billions Thank in you. data centers. We just leverage. Your biggest investment then is basically your people and, and, and the, the algorithms and the, and the you know, software that they're able to come up with and then that you'd hope to sell and kind of lock people in. And look, all of this explains why you're such a valuable private company. I don't know if you saw uh, Rich Handler at Jeffries yesterday just put out a big missive saying the IPO market is back open. Now, we've been in an unfriendly 48-hour period uh, from the NASDAQ's point of view, but it does feel like... Like maybe we're, we're, we've had a, a series of pretty successful IPOs this year. Um, is that something that you're watching, thinking, okay, there's, you know, I'm getting pressure from employees and so forth to take this thing public? Or would you prefer to be, to stay out of the limelight, maybe do a little M&A without regulators looking over your shoulder so much and kind of see where we are in a couple of years' time? Yeah, look, we are not too focused on trying to nail the timing. Uh, you know, we just, you know, Q1 was one of our strongest quarters ever, and we just closed Q2. Again, growing 60% year over year, you know, run rate of $2.4 billion, all data intelligence, right, AI use cases. So we're not seeing a lot of these headwinds that, you know, we see in the global markets. Um, and, you know, uh, the, when the timing is right, we will go public. You know, the employees want that. Uh, so it's something we're going to do. We're not going to try to time it. And, you know, frankly, it, you, don't need to, you don't need to go out exactly when the market is at the top. Uh, when the company is ready, we'll go out and hopefully just continue to grow the company and bring value with data and AI to our customers over many decades to come. Yeah, and I know we've been seeing the market focus a lot on the cost of, you know, AI and so forth. But the other big question mark is on the demand and on the productivity that may come from it. And there have been some questions, for instance, about Copilot and whether that's worth the money for a lot of corporations right now. Um, from where you sit and from your experience, where is the biggest bang for the buck when it comes to deploying AI uh, in the workspace? Yeah, I mean, we see it throughout. The use cases, we've been doing this for 10 years. They keep getting more and more successful. But then when ChatGPT was released in November 2022, the market has gone kind of crazy. And there's been really inflated expectations. And in some sense, every company on the planet last year was saying, we have to build AI. We have to build lots of AI use cases. And I think many projects were started that maybe shouldn't have been started. But now I think it's sort of a little bit back to being more rational and looking at where do we have special data? Where, where does my company have some secret sauce that we can leverage and combine with Gen AI so that we can get ahead of the competition. Uh, so there are lots of use cases, you know, of course, in customer service, 
Uh, we're seeing more and more automation there. Seeing in financial sectors, if you want generative AI to sift through massive amounts of SEC filings hmm. and glean signal from that, those are very, very interesting use cases. Of course, machine learning is continue to be really important for predicting, uh, predicting revenue, predicting loss, uh, minimizing risk. So there's massive use cases. They're increasing. I just think maybe it got a little bit overhyped in 2023, and they, maybe expectations got kind of ahead of us a little bit.